Okay, guys, well, let's go ahead and get started. This session is called Using Google Sites for Class Web Pages. And um, basically, here's what we're going to cover. We're talking about why, are we, why, why am I suggesting that we use Google Sites? Uh, you guys know that for the last probably 13 years, we've been using that little web program that I wrote 13 years ago called PowPack. And that's allowed you to have web pages. And you know what? I was very proud of that program. That was a nice little program. And uh, it did its job. It really was nice. But 13 years ago, you, don't have, you didn't have the tools you have now. I mean, if you wanted to do a web page back then, you really needed to know, you know how to write in HTML or you needed a program like Microsoft Front Page or something like that. Um, or later on Dreamweaver and you had to upload things to a server. And so PowPack really met a need. But now there are so many good options out there that do exactly that kind of idea and do it way better than I can do. I mean, I trust Google a lot more to create a web design program than myself. So uh, we're going to talk about what makes Google Sites a good alternative, why we're looking at that, why I'm encouraging people to start using Google Sites for their class pages and other pages here in the district. I'm going to look at a few example sites just so you have an idea of what this might look like by the end of the session today. And then that's it. We're going to create stuff. We're going to get in there and start making web pages. Okay. So, um, yeah, and a quick note. Yes, this is a basic introduction to Google Sites. There's no way I can cover everything in Sites. I mean, it is just a massive program that can do lots more than we're going to fit into a two-hour session. This is a two-hour session. I hope you guys realize that is a two-hour session. Uh, we can take a little break in the middle of Or if you ever just need to get up and walk out at any point, that's perfectly fine. If you're not familiar with the high school, right down the hall, halfway down on the left-hand side is the restroom. So if you need to head out at any point, feel free to. But things like inserting videos and embedding interactive forms and password protecting certain ports of parts of the site and drop-down menus and all that, no, we're not going to be getting into that, but I would love to help any of you guys with that if you want to go further later on and learn more. We can do advanced classes. I can work with you. This is going to be basic. It really will. We're going to stay basic with it. And I also want to say I'm not teaching you the way to do it. I'm just teaching you a way to do it. Google Sites is a very powerful tool, and you know we're going to talk about making a links page at some point today. Well, there's lots of ways you could do that, you know, and we're, I'm going to show you an option. If you figure out another way to do it or you said, nah, I'd rather do it that way, perfectly fine. Google Sites has lots of it. We're going to look at a pictures page. Well, I can think of like three different ways to do a pictures page. I'm going to show you one that will give you at least an idea of how you could do it. So feel free to try other methods and uh, tell me about it. I'd love to see what you come up with if you decide to do something a different way than I'm going to show. All right, so what is Google Sites? Basically, it's a web design program that comes with Google Apps. Since we're a Google Apps for Education School District, everybody has access to sites. Our students do as well, but we have limited their abilities. Students cannot create a new site by default, okay? They can, you can make a site, and if you choose, you could give some students rights to edit portions of it. Like, okay, the, these kids are going to be able to help me because they're part of this club or organization. I'm going to let them post news on the site. You could do that. You could give students edit rights if you wish. But by default, if a student goes on, they can't make their own site. Now, I can turn that on. If you've got a group of kids and you're saying, Eric, this is a project we're doing, and we actually have. We've had kids do that in the middle school. They did a, an explorers project where they uh, created uh, Google Sites as if they were famous explorers. So I can do that. I can take those kids and I can turn it on for them if need be, but just be aware they don't have access by default to make sites. Um, but it is a great option for all kinds of things, whether it's building sites, club sites, class sites, whatever the case. Uh, why? Do we like it? Well, first of all, it's all web-based, just like PowPack was. It's all web-based. You don't have to install anything. You don't need to borrow a CD and you know load something on your computer. Anywhere you can work on it, from home, school, on vacation, whatever. If you can get to the web, you can get to your page and you can edit it. Uh, next, it's very easy to use. Okay, The stuff we're going to look at today, I hope you feel very comfortable with. Uh, we're going to try to you know, give you a nice, solid introduction to it. But it's also very powerful. Even though it's easy to use, that doesn't mean it's simple. It's like, well, that's all you can do. Actually, it's very powerful. You can make a very complex site if you want to. It integrates great with the other Google services. So if you are doing a Google Calendar, if you do Google Docs, if you start putting pictures in Picasa Web, which is the class at 3 o'clock today, if 
you can stay, great. If not, I've got the handouts online, Picasso Web, great, great, great service. If you're using the Google services, it is so easy to take the work you're doing and put it right into your site. No need to double your work and do it here and then do it there. It can all integrate very nicely together. Um, here's a nice thing. It allows you to create as many sites as you want. You don't need a different username and password for your class site. And then, well, I'm doing the spring play, so I need a username and password for that. And I'm coaching, you know, uh, boys track. I need a username and password for that. No. You, with your one account, can make as many sites as you want. Or if somebody else makes sites, they can share edit rights with you. So you can collaborate. So it's like, you know, with your one account, you can log in and you can see all of the sites that you have access to, all the sites you're allowed to go in and edit. So that's really nice. Um, it allows to have uh, certain pages public and other ones private. And you can, you can choose who is allowed to see things. Now that's neat. If you've got something you want to put online that for some reason it's just for the staff, that's fine. If somebody clicks on the link, it'll say, sorry, you're not authorized to see this page. You can have sections of your site that are, you know, locked down to just the staff or just your grade level or just your students if you wish to do that. That's nice. Uh, you can share, I mentioned this already, but you can share edit rights with others. And this can be done on a per page level. If you say, I'm going to let you edit my site, you don't have to give somebody edit rights to your home site, you can say, you can edit this page. So it's really great if you're doing a bunch of people working on something together. You don't have to do it all yourself. You can, you know, give out the responsibility and say, you can edit this page, you can add things to here, whatever the case. And of course, it's free. So all of those are good reasons. Those are all really good reasons to make Google Sites. Um, so now we're going to actually take a look at a couple quick examples of sites, but then we're going to be on to actually making the site. And of course, we got links there to that, which is on our website. So let's go ahead and I'll we'll close out of that guy. And let me go ahead and show you um, some quick examples of what this might look like when you're done. So uh, let me see if I've still got it in my memory here, my cache. Looks like I do. All right. So for example, um, I think which one I want to show you. I think this is I think this is the one I was going to show you. Bring it up here. Okay, here you go. Now, guys, this is a very simple example, okay? If I was really doing a full class page, I'd probably put all kinds of other bells and whistles in eventually. But what I'm showing you now is a very good example of what you could have at the end of our two-hour session today, okay? Just a very basic but functional class website. It would not have to look like mine, but these are the, the structural elements that we're talking about. So you could do something like this. You could have a nice little welcome page that says who you are, has links to your email and how to contact you, that kind of stuff. You could have a picture of yourself on there. Actually, you can have as many pictures as you want. I just put one picture in there as an example. So you can have a nice little welcome page. And then on the side, you can, you can have a navigation area over here. And it just automatically populates. You'll see it's real easy to use. And you can have different things in there, like you could have an announcements page. You know, so maybe, you know, you're just going to post something weekly on there about what's happening in class. Well, this is like a blog page. And every time you put a post, the old posts move down and a new post comes above it. And people can scroll down and read all the posts. If they click on them, they can get, you know, more information, whatever the case might be. So you could have an announcements page. You could also use this for like your newsletter. If you did like a newsletter, you could... It could be a, a, a totally online newsletter where they, they read each of the posts as a newsletter. There's, of course, other ways you could do that, too. Um, you could do a calendar page. And a calendar page would basically just pull in your calendar. So you would be able to have, not your personal calendar, okay, um, your class calendar. Now, keep in mind, if you, if you haven't used Google Calendar, just like Google Sites, you can have many sites. Google Calendar, you can have many calendars. You can have as many calendars as you want. If I go into my Google Calendar, and we can talk more about this later, but I have multiple calendars. You know, I've got my personal one, and I've got, you know, some pretend ones. Here's one. I'll turn that off. Here's one for, like, Algebra 1. It's not, it's not real. I don't really teach Algebra 1, but there's, like, an Algebra 1 calendar and a pre-Algebra calendar. I was just doing those as examples. And you can have as many calendars as you want, and you can decide... I'm going to put all of the class assignments and homework and due dates on a class calendar, and then you can embed that right into your site, and there you go. You're good to go. Okay, so you can have a calendar page. 
um, a files page. And you can do a files page bunches of different ways. Uh, this is an example of a simple files page. We'll look at one that's a little bit more sophisticated in our session here today too. But you could have, you know, you could upload PDFs, you could link in Google Documents, you could upload Word documents, you could put whatever on there you want, <coughs> organize them into groups, have your handouts, have your study guides, have your common forms, whatever, your newsletter, that's another way to do it. If you did like a newsletter and you turned it into a PDF or something, you could put the newsletter up on like a, a files type page. That'd be fine. Uh, you could do a links page. And again, this is a very simple one. Uh, we'll look at some other options as well. But you can do a nice simple links page where you can have, you know, the category of the link, the title of the link, a description of it, and then click here to go to it. Or you could break them out on different pages. Each page could be its own category, you know. It's up to you, depending on how sophisticated you want to get with it. You could have a pictures page. And again, this is just one option. There are so many ways you could do this. This is one where I'm pulling in pictures from Picasso web albums as slideshows. So somebody could come in here. They could see the slideshows of, you know, the guest speaker and then the slideshow of the field trip, and then the slideshow of the student projects that they just finished. If somebody wants to, they can come in here, they can click on this, it'll open up Picasso Web Albums for them, so the parents can actually click on the slideshow and go to the actual web album to see the full-size pictures. And if you don't know this, they can even go up and click prints, and they can order prints and have them sent to Walgreens, and they'll just go pick them up later that day, and they can have these printed out for them. So it puts that ability in the hands of the grandparents and the parents to go to your pictures and see them and order their own prints of them if they want. So that's nice. So that would be a really quick example of what a class page could look like. And of course, you'll make yours much more interesting than that, and you'll make it much more sophisticated as time goes on. But that's sort of what we're shooting for here today. Um, as another example of what a Google site might look like, our new district and building sites, those are Google sites. Okay? That looks very, very different than my classroom page, and I guess that's good to know. You can make them look so, so, so different. This is just a Google site. You know, we've got drop-down menus, and we've got, you know, little rotating pictures here and a little mini calendar there. We've got little blurbs of announcements that are upcoming, recent tweets, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. If you go to our high school page, I think the guidance office, they've switched over to Google Sites. So if I go to like the guidance homepage, that's a Google Site. You know, they've laid theirs out this way and they've got all their links here. So from very, very simple to very sophisticated, really up to you how far you want to go with it. All right, guys. Well, let me pause there before we actually start the work. Any questions? Comments, questions, anything? Over to this. Do we let you know, turn off Good the question. Thank you. Once you're happy with your page, when it's ready for prime time, that's exactly right. You just send me an email and you say, yep, it looks good. I'm happy with it. What I'll do then is I'll go to our building sites and I'll change the link that points to your page. Instead of pointing to your PowPack page, it'll point to your Google Sites page at that point. Okay? So at your request, when you're ready for that. Does this have, like, uh, PowPack has where you can see how Yes, but we're not going to cover that today. If you didn't hear the question, the question is, can you see statistics? Can you see that? Actually, yes, way more sophisticated statistics, way more sophisticated than PowPack could ever do. It uses what's called Google Analytics. It's powerful. It's nice. It graphs and charts and all that kind of stuff. Exactly what pages, where people came from, what city, what state, what country, all that stuff. We're not talking about that today, okay? But for those who are interested, I'll be more than happy to show you how to get the Google, Google Analytics piece going. Yeah, we use that on all of our Google sites to track and see, well, what are people visiting? What pages are they looking at? And where are they coming from? And how long are they staying? And all that kind of stuff. Good question. All right. All right, guys. Well, we're going to get started. And so um, I'm going to pretty much go through this handout. So if you got it there, I'm going to jump around a little bit, but I'm pretty much going to go through the handout as it is. And everything I'm sharing should be in here, hopefully very nicely documented for you so you can look back at it later. We're going to be on page two of the handout, and we're going to be talking about how to create the site. So the very first thing we need to do is know how to get to Google Sites. How do you get there? How do you arrive at Google Sites? And um, there's several ways to do it. Um, one option is just to go to our regular district page and follow a link. I've actually put a link on our district page. It's on all the page. I think it's on all the school pages, no matter what page you go to. 
Uh, if you're on any of our building pages or the district page, right under the staff drop down, I went ahead and put in a Google Sites link. So you know, that's perfectly fine. You could just go there and click Google Sites and that'll get you going. But I just want you to know that you can get to it other ways too. Like for example, if you're in any of the Google products, like I'll go back to my calendar. Like if you're in Google Calendar or you're in Google Mail, if you're in Gmail, or if you're in Google Docs, okay, anywhere that you're at, I don't know if you've noticed this, but there's a black bar that runs across the top of the screen and that links you out to other Google Apps products. So you can always just look up there and there's like a sites link right up in that black bar. So that's just be aware. You can jump between Google products from Gmail to Docs to Calendar to Sites using the Google black bar. That's fine. And then lastly, if you just want to, you can just type in the address. It's really nothing but sites.google.com. That'll work as well. So use the links on our page, on our home pages. Use uh, the black bar or just type in sites.google.com. Doesn't matter either way. That's going to get you here. Now, you may not see what I'm seeing when you first get to Google Sites. Okay, Mine may look different than yours, but you ought to have at least this section here where it says sites, create, and so forth. This may be blank. This whole section here may have nothing. This is going to fill up, though, over time. The stuff in the middle there, those are websites that I have edit rights to. Those are things I'm allowed to edit. Now, it may be blank. You may have nothing in there right now. But as you create a site, as somebody shares a site with you, as you collaborate on a building site, team site, grade level site, you'll start getting more of them in there that you can go to. So I can go to any of these sites and edit them. Well, we're not worried about that. What we want to do is we want to create a new site. Now, if you've already got one created, just chill for a moment and wait till you know I catch up to you guys. That's perfectly fine. If you started a site, you're perfectly fine, no problem whatsoever. But for those who have not started one yet, you need to be begin by clicking the red create button. And the red create button will bring you to this screen where you get to create your site. Now, um, there is a uh, couple of options here, not too many to choose. We need to pick a template, which we're going to go with the blank one, okay? Be aware there are other templates out there. I'll just say this real quick about templates. There's nothing wrong with them at all. They're perfectly fine, but um, I'm going to go with the blank one because I would prefer to show you from scratch how to do this so you understand the mechanics, but I don't want to short sell the fact that there are templates out there. If you click browse the gallery for more templates, You'll see some people have put together like, here's a, you know, a template that'd be good for a sports team. Here's a template that might be good for a club. Here's a template that might be good for something. And that's fine. And you can change them. If you use a template, you can modify it later. But for what we're trying to do today, I want to start with a blank slate just so you see the mechanics and you feel comfortable. Oh, that's how I can do it myself. I don't have to use a template. So we're going to use the blank template. I will let you know this blank template is slightly modified from the normal blank template. It's not totally blank. I've inserted a few things into it for North Canton Schools. So like you'll already have a link that says back to North Canton Schools on it and some stuff like that. I have put a few little tweaks in our blank template. But it's basically a blank template. All right, so we've got that chosen. Next, we want to name our site. Well, guys, you can name it anything you want. Uh, it'd probably be something like Mr. So-and-so's class page or Mrs. So-and-so's, you know, website or I don't know. But go ahead and choose a name for it. So, like, I might call this Mr. Uh, Kurtz's class website. Whoops, lost my period there. There we go. So I could name it something like Mr. Kurtz's class website, but you can name it whatever you want. Now, can you change that later? Yes, you can change the name of your site. You're allowed to later on go in and alter it if, you know, somebody got married and wanted to change their name. No problem, that's fine. They can go in and they can change the name of their site, or you just decide you want it to say something different. Now, what you can't change later is the next thing. Look below there. As I typed in Mr. Kurtz's class website, Look what it started doing. It started filling in a web address for my site. Google Sites is going to take the normal start, which is kind of ugly, but we'll talk later about how you can make it pretty. Uh, Sites.google slash North Canton Schools, blah, 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 slash the name of your site. All it's going to do is copy whatever you typed in the top, and it's going to put it right down there. 
that you're allowed to change. It doesn't have to be the same. So, I mean, now you can change. You can't change it later. Once we create it, that's your website address, okay? But if I didn't want it to be slash Mr. Dash Kurtz Dash Class Dash Website, that's fine. I could, you know, I could just make it slash Kurtz. And then it's a much shorter <laughs> web address. It's not this long, crazy web address. Or, you know, I could just say Mr. Kurtz. Or I could do it. Now, I'm going to do something which would be different probably than you. I'm just going to do something like Kurt's example, um, 007. I'm up to seven. I've been doing these sessions enough times. I've got quite a few examples. So I'm going to name it Kurt's example 007 just because this is only an example. It's a demo page, okay? That's why I'm naming mine that. You can leave yours alone or feel free to edit that link. The only thing that is important is it can't be the same as anybody else's. If we had two Millers in our district, and they both tried to name their page slash Miller. The first person to do it would get it. <laughs> the next person, when they click create, Google would say, I'm sorry, somebody already used that address. And they'd have to put in, you know, J Miller or something like that for their, for their web address. Okay. Now, again, like I said, this is kind of an ugly, long address. We can help you very easily once your page is ready. Okay, once it goes public, you really can't do it until it's public. But once it's public, we can give you a much shorter. It's called rewriting. We can rewrite or redirect the web address. And what it can become is your username or whatever you want, dot northcantonschools.org. So it could be like, you know, mrmiller.northcantonschools.org. And that would take them right to your page. So they, you, you won't have to give out this horrific long address. Once you get to that point, let me know, and I'll help you with that. We won't get that far today. That's it, guys. Uh, I know you may be tempted for the select a theme, but hang on. We'll do themes in just a little bit here. So really, it's nothing but blank template, name your site, change the, the address if you want. Don't have to, but if you want. And then that's it. Go ahead and click Create in the top. If anybody isn't sure, let me know. If you're not sure about what you're doing, but just hit Create and chugga, chugga, chugga. It's going to make your site for you. So we'll give that just a moment, and it will come up. All right. Hey, there it is. Very good. All right. Now, we're going to be on page three. There we go. All right. So now you guys have a website created. It is private. Nobody can see it. Okay. How do I know that? Look up in the top right-hand corner where there's a big blue share button. You don't need to click it. Just look at it. It's got a padlock on it, okay? That means it's private, okay? As you work on this, nobody else is going to see it. I'll show you later. You're going to have to click that share button eventually and turn it public. You're going to have to make it into a public page. But right now, the site is private just for you, okay? Well, the first thing we're going to do, which everybody wants to do, because we're going to change the colors. Because as soon as you go, oh, hey, that's great. Oh, that's ugly. So right away, I know you want to personalize this. You want to make this something that you know, looks like you. So on page three, we're going to talk about modifying the look of your site. Before we even type anything in, we're going to play around with colors and stuff. Google Sites allows you to, as always, do it very easily with like a single click and pick a theme, or do it very complicated and go in and tweak every little thing about it. You've got the choice to go as far as you want with modifying the look. Here's how you do it. What you're going to do is you're going to go into your site settings. And this is an important skill to learn because you're going to do it every now and then, okay? And it will take you to a screen where you've got all sorts of things you can turn on and off, okay? The way you get into site settings is up in the top right, there's a more button. And if you click on that more button, you get a drop down. And in that drop down, kind of near the bottom, you'll see a link that says manage site. That lets you get into your behind the scenes site settings where you can change things, okay, about the site. So let's all do that. Let's click on more and then manage site. And that's going to take us to this screen. Now, guys, there's a lot of stuff here. We're not going to mess with almost any of it. It's just a couple of little things. But notice, yeah, you could change the name of the site. You could do this. You could do that. Okay. Don't worry about that. Look on the left. And way at the bottom of the left, you have to scroll down. If you don't see it right away, just scroll on the left, far, far, far left. Way down there, you will see a section that says site layout, colors and fonts, themes. We want to click on themes. So on the very, very far left, all the way down at the bottom, click on themes. And what that does is it opens up some themes they put together that you can use for your site. Now, you can change any of these. 
Don't forget that. You can pick a theme and you can modify it any way you want, but this gives you a chance to at least start with something a little different. Well, how does that work? Well, what you do, guys, is basically you come in and you just click on the little uh, magnifying glass and say, I wonder what rounders would look like. Give it a click, it opens up a little preview window and you go, oh, okay, well, that's kind of cool. And then you can close out of that and try another preview, okay? I wonder what desert panel looks like. Oh, well, that's what it looks like, that's kind of cool. You know, and on and on and on. And so you can kind of just preview them. Um, I'll go with Treehouse, I've been using that one for my example. So I'll just go with Treehouse, if I click on Treehouse and look at it and go, do I like that? Yeah, that's kind of cool, that's a, that's a neat one. So how do I choose it? Well, basically it's nothing more than selecting it, which is clicking on the little thumbnail. And you notice when I do that, it gets like a little red border around it telling me I have selected that. So when I clicked on Treehouse, I was selecting it. And then all I do is click the red save button at the top of the screen. It's really nothing more than that. So I go up and say save, and it goes ahead and it makes that change. Now you can change it as much as you want. So if you chose Treehouse today and next week you want to choose Desert Panel or you want Toothpaste or Shortcake or Smoke or whichever one, no problem. Go back, pick another one, change it on the fly. Perfectly fine. Now, once I've done that, let's say I want to get back to my site. And again, this is sort of something you're going to do every now and then. You're going to leave your site, go into the settings, leave the settings, come back to the site. When you're done in the settings, when you're finished with it, the way you get back to your site is again on the left-hand side, but not at the bottom, at the top of the left-hand side, you'll see the name of your website with a little arrow sort of pointing to the left. That's the link to leave the settings and return back to your site. So if I go to the left-hand side, top of the column, click on the name of my site there, Mr. Kurtz Class Website, it'll shoot me back over to my site, and now I can see what it looks like for real. Very easily, I can go right back into settings, make changes, go right back out. Now, what I just showed you guys there is if all you want to do is pick a theme and be done. Well, what if you're a tinkerer? What if you want to tweak this and tweak that? No problem. We can go back into the settings and I'll show you where you can really modify things as much as you want. So here we go. Go back to your site settings, just go up to more in the top right hand corner, unless you're still there, you can just stay there, but if you've gone back to your page, go to more. Go down to Manage Site, just like normal. And this time, scroll down on the left, but instead of choosing themes, choose the one right above it, Colors and Fonts. Okay, right above it, Colors and Fonts. So give a click on that, and now you can tweak anything you want on this site. So for example, if I came in here and said, okay, uh, I, I like this site, but, um, I don't like the color of the title. I don't like how it's this kind of light blue there for Mr. Kurt's website. Well, if I start scrolling down here, look at all the things I can change. I can change page background, page font, page link color, site header. That's probably where I'll go to change that. Site header, font, font size, color, content area, content area gadgets, sidebar gadgets, navigation. Oh my goodness, there's so much stuff. Well, let's say I just want to change just my title. For, I just want my Mr. Kurtz class website to look a little different than that. So where I would go for that is, it looks like site header probably is that area. So what can I do? Okay, I can go to site title color. I can click on that. And instead of using the theme default, I could say, I want to do the custom option. And so instead of whatever it is, this kind of a light blue thing, I could say, you know, I want it to be black. Click on that and it auto updates below so I can kind of see that it's going to make Mr. Kurtz class website be black instead of the theme default. Now I can always choose theme default again, it will go back to the light blue, but if I say custom and black, I can do that. What else can I change? Well, maybe I want a different font for the title. I want it to be something more interesting than that. Okay, so site title font, that's in the same site header group. I could go in and say, let's do a custom font. All right, guys, you can lose hours doing this because at this point, there's just hundreds of fonts to choose from, okay? And I apologize. I'm going to dangle this in front of you and then tell you we have to move on. But, yes, I'm just showing you the idea behind it, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and you can scroll through and pick whatever. I mean, there's just all kinds of things, you know? So, I don't know what looks like a fun font here for my, my title. There's a lot of them that look kind of cool. Um... 
I'll go with uh, thought I saw something I liked I was scrolling too fast there sorry about that oh golly what's chewy look like oh, that's kind of interesting not too exciting. Oh, I'll go. What's, what's rock salt look like? Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, I'll, I'll do rock salt. Mr. Kirk's class website. That looks kind of cool. Okay, but the idea, guys, is this is where you go to tweak things. Now, if you mess something up, you can always click on it again and say use theme default, and it will undo what you know what you've tweaked there. So, again, we could spend the whole time just tweaking this, and I apologize, we're not going to be able to. <laughs> we're going to, you know, if, and you don't have to make any of these changes. So what I'm showing you here, please do not feel that you have to click what I'm clicking and actually change these things. I just want to show you that's where you would go to customize it for yourself. So if you don't want to make those changes, you can just hit cancel. That's perfectly fine. I'll go ahead and save my changes, though, just so we can see that that actually does work pretty easily. So after I've made all of these little changes here, I'll go back up and click save. And then I want to return to my website. Well, I do that again, left hand side, very top of the column, where the name of my site is. That's the link to shoot me back over. And there we go. Now I'm going to pause there and see any questions, any concerns, any comments about editing the look of your site. Yes. Okay, good question. In the font area of where we just were, that's the default choices. You can override that word by word on a page. So are you saying you've got a font chosen for the site, but then you copied something from your old website and pasted it in? Absolutely. I'll show you how to fix that. Uh, anytime you bring information in that you haven't typed yourself, it may be bringing stuff along with it. So once we go on to the next page and do the welcome page, let me mimic that. We'll do a couple things, then I'll copy and paste something in, and I'll show you how to strip out the stuff that comes with it so that it will go to your correct stuff, okay? All right, guys. Well, then let's move on. Page four, how to edit your welcome page. Now, what I'm going to teach you now about editing the welcome page, it's not specific about the welcome page. It's any page, any page we make in Google Sites, the following things I'm gonna tell you, they're true for every single page, okay? So basically we're talking about just editing a page, but we're gonna use the welcome page because that's the only one we have right now, is just the welcome page. All right, so how do you edit a page in Google Sites? So we are back at our normal website, just the normal welcome page for our website. And what we're gonna do is look up in the top right-hand corner. Now up there, We've already seen the share button, we've seen the more button. Now we're gonna use the pencil button, okay? That's the edit page button. If you're curious, the one next to it, that's the new page button. We'll do that one later when we make some new pages, the one with the plus sign on it. We're gonna do edit. So we're gonna use a little pencil icon, give a click on that, say we wanna edit the page. And it's gonna go ahead and switch us into edit mode. Now guys, here is a difference from Powpack, okay? You're gonna edit the page on the page. In Powpack, that's not how it worked. You'd say, I want to do something, it would take you to another thing, you'd do what you want, then it'd bring you back to the site. This is like a what you see is what you get editor. You actually edit on the page itself and you see it live while you're doing it, okay? So you, you actually get to see what it looks like, which is kind of cool. All right, so here's what we need to do, guys. Um, now that we're in edit mode, this really is just like a word processor at this point, okay? This is just, you know, what do you have up here? You've got things like font size and you've got uh, different fonts here if you want to override some stuff, but I'll show you differently what you were asking about. Uh, you've got bold, italics, underline, you've got text color, you've got uh, uh, numbering, you've got bulleting, you've got decrease and increase indent, you know, you've got left, center, right, you've got all that kind of stuff. What I need you guys to do, and we'll give you a couple minutes to do this, is we need something in here. We need some text. Now, if you've already got something, just hang tight. Maybe I'll pop around and, and take a look at what you guys have. But for those of you that this is brand new, we just need to type something in right now. It's, it, doesn't need, it does not need to be a lot, just some little welcome things. Maybe you just want to say something like, welcome to my page. You know, I've been with the school so many years. I teach such and such. You can contact me, you know, at this email address. 
something like that. I've got so many kids, this, that, whatever, a dog and a cat. So take a moment and type a little something in there. I'm going to do that too real quick so I just have something in there. Then I'm going to swing around. And once we have something in there, then we're going to talk about how really to start editing and doing and messing around with stuff. And then, yes, we'll talk about also bringing stuff in from other places and how to clean it up. So. All right, everybody. Uh, at this point, I think everybody should have something typed in, okay? And if you don't have it all, don't, don't worry. You've got plenty of time later on. We, I just need you to have a little something in there so that we can actually work with it. Now, again, we're talking about starting from scratch. We're going to take a moment, just a, a second here, and I'll talk about what if you've already got, obviously, stuff on your Pal Pack page or somewhere else. You know, use whatever service and you want to copy and paste stuff in. We'll talk real quick about how to clean that up. But for right now, here I am, and I've typed in this information. What can I do to make this at least a little bit more interesting than it is? Okay, well, this is like a word processor, so sure, I could come in and I could highlight things and I could make this bold if I wanted. Okay, so now that's bold. Very good, okay. I could come in and I could uh, change the color. Okay, I want this to be a font color. Uh, looks like, uh, I could do red because it looks like there's a lot of red on the page, so I can make that red instead. Um, you know, I could center things, I could, you know, whatever. Uh, maybe I want to bullet some things. Down here, below are ways to contact me. I could highlight those, go up to the bulleting option, click bullet list, boom, now it's bulleted, okay? So all of the normal things you'd expect. I want to make something, you know, larger, no problem. You know, there's the different font sizes, okay? So very easy to edit things like that. Um, however, Notice that I've included things like my email address, and I've included some websites. What if I want to make those live hyperlinks? That's something else you might want to do on your page. Here's my email address, and make it something they can click so they can send you an email. Okay. Well, in this formatting toolbar up here, one that I skipped over was one that looks like a chain link. Okay. It's right next to the font colors and the bolts and the numbering. That's your link button, a little chain link there. What you can do is you can highlight any text you have in, on your page, click the link button, and you can turn things into hyperlinks so people can click on them. Now, here's the nice thing about Google Sites. If what you typed in is already in the format of a link, it'll just make it a hyperlink for you once you click the button. If, though, you want to make something into a hyperlink and it's just words, you have to provide, you have to type in the actual www part of it. So, for example, Let's take my email address. My email address is a valid linkable thing. It's my email address at northcantonschools.org. So if I highlight that and I go up and click my link button, Google Sites goes, oh, that's an email address, no problem. There you go, turns it into a hyperlink. Same for this. I was talking about uh, the Google Apps user group site that I work on, okay? So I could come here, I could highlight that. It's already got a valid address, www.appsusergroup.org. Come up here, click, a little, click the link button, and it turns it into a link. But what about this? I do that podcast every couple of weeks called The State of Tech. Okay. Well, The State of Tech, if I came in here and highlighted that and said, I want to make that a link. Well, what's going to happen is Google Sites is going to say, to what? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the state of tech is. So if you are clicking on something that's not already in link format, and then you say, I want that to turn into a link, you've got to tell it where to link to. Okay? So you've really got two main options you would use. One is you either link it to another page on your site. Now, I don't have any other pages, but if I did, if I had lots of pages, I can link right to another page. Like I could put, I could type on my homepage, be sure to check out the newsletter. And I could take check out the newsletter, highlight it, go to links, and I can link to my newsletter page that I've made. Okay, so you can link to internal pages that way. But what if it's a web address of some site, you know, out there elsewhere? Well, that's where I just click right here where it says web address, and I basically just need to type in the address. Now, if I, if I know the address and it's short, just blah, 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 type it in. If you don't know the address, then you're probably going to want to go to the page, copy the address, come back and paste it. So, like, I could open up a new tab. I could go to the State of Text website. I could click here. I could copy. I could come back to here. I could paste. Whoops. I could paste that in. Okay? And hit OK. And there we go. 
So now my email address is linked, my websites are linked. I don't need that anymore, close out of that. And that's how I can very easily put in links. Now, you might want your links though to open in a new window. Sometimes that's what you want, sometimes not. Like if I was saying, here, look at the newsletter and it's part of my site, well, no, it should just stay right there. But what if I want somebody to click on my State of Tech podcast and I want them to go out to that site, like in a new window or a new tab, and not lose my site. You might do this for your, like, you know, a links page or something where you want them to be go, go out and explore, but you want your page to still be there. Well, watch what you can do. If I've made a link and I click on it, it gives me a little pop-up here. And one of the options is change. The other is remove if I want to strip the link off. But if I click on change, look at the very bottom, and you'll notice there's a checkbox next to open this link in a new window. I can check that and say, okay, for any of the links I want to do that. Maybe apps user group, give that a click, say change, open in a new window. So any link that you want to shoot out to a different page or a different tab and leave yours behind, you've got that option. You don't have to do that, but if you want to, just be aware that is there. That's an option with links. Okay, so we've got text, we've changed colors, we've put in bullets, we've put in uh, links, we need a picture probably, kind of a non-personal page right now, doesn't have anything specifically about you know me, should probably get my picture on there, make that kind of jump out. So let's talk about putting a picture in. All right, to insert a picture, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click up here at the top because I'm probably gonna go ahead and put it somewhere at the top. I may move it to the right, but I'm gonna click up there at the top. And I'm gonna talk about how to insert a picture in two different ways. And again, guys, what I'm teaching you, it's true about every page. Yeah, we're doing the welcome page, but this skill you can use on every single page in your site to put pictures in, okay? Here's what you do if you wanna insert a picture. And by the way, if you're following along, we just finished page four, that puts us on page five. Okay, there we go, yes, we are on page five. Um, to insert a picture, what I'm gonna do is go up to the insert menu, and I've got two options. Either I'm gonna choose image from the first column, or I'm going to choose Picasso photo from the second column. Now, if you haven't used Picasso web albums, that won't do you any good because you don't have anything there. Later today at 3 o'clock, we'll have a class on that. Hopefully, we'll start getting more people using Picasso web albums. They're excellent. But I'm going to show you both of them so you can kind of see what they look like. If I say I want to insert and I just choose image, this is what you would expect. It says, where is it at? You have to go browse for the picture. You have to click that and go to your hard drive or go to your M drive or go to a flash key you plugged in that has pictures on it and you've got to upload the picture. Now, because you're here at school, you could go to the R drive because we have the Life Touch pictures there. Now, you don't have to do this right now, but if you want to, your staff picture should be on the R drive and you could grab it from there and you could upload it. Uh, on the R drive, if you pick your building and you pick Life Touch pictures and you pick like last year, it'll open up a folder and it'll have all the kids, but it also has all the staff, and you could grab yourself out of there and upload it. And again, you don't have to do that right now if you don't want to. Um, I went ahead and I put a picture of myself on my desktop so I can grab it without having to hunt too far. So if I click Choose File, and if I go to my desktop, and I scroll around on my desktop here, I should have, there it is, here's a picture of me. I'll click that picture, and I'll say Open. And it's gonna upload the picture. I'm gonna hit OK and it's gonna drop that picture in there. Now I can move it around and do stuff, but that's how you get it in there. Now, if you want to try to find a picture, go. you can do that if you have one. If you wanna to try to go to the R drive and you're not sure how to find the images. By the way, if you're on the R drive, you can see um, like little previews of the pictures in Windows in the top um, right-hand corner of that screen. There's like a little uh, view button that lets you change from list view to thumbnail view. And I can come around and help you if you wanna see how that works. And that way you can actually see faces because you, you won't know by the, the, the names of the pictures. The staff are at the very bottom of the lists on the R drive in those folders because the kids are, it's alphabetical, so their numbers come first. So if you want, go ahead and grab a picture and go ahead and uh, upload that and put it in. Now I'm gonna mess, mess with the picture in just a second. But at the same time, let me tell you that I could also have put a picture in from Picasso Web Albums. If I hit insert, instead of choosing image, if I choose Picasso photo, it opens up a little bit of a different window. What it opens up now is a screen where it shows me all of my web albums that I've loaded up in Picasso. Now mine aren't very interesting. It's usually just demo things that I'm doing for uh, class and it's 
screen captures for my help guides. So not anything too exciting in there. But the idea is I can scroll through all of my web albums and I can pick any picture off of here that I want. So like, um, you know, here's some math comics. And again, I'm just doing this because it's you know, for, for this site. But I could come in and I could pick one of these pictures and I could insert those into the page just as well. So once it's in Picasso Web Albums, you have access to it just about anywhere. Okay. Well, I'll just go ahead and wait for just a sec before we start moving these around. I did put our new North Canton logos on the R drive also. All right, guys, take a look here. Um, if I want, another way I can put a picture in is off the R drive from, of course, insert image. So that's normal. Nothing, nothing different there. Insert image. But if I go to choose file, I think I got my R drive mapped now. Yep, there it is. If you go to the R drive... You may not know this, but we actually have a clip art folder on the R drive. It's from years ago. It's just a long, long time ago. We had clip art and people wanted it there. If you open up the clip art folder, I just the other day added a little folder called Common Images for Web. It's like the first folder in the clip art folder. And if I switch to my thumbnail view here, you'll see that what they are is they're some of the new logos. So if you go to the R drive, clip art, Common Images for the Web, I've already put those out there, and I'm going to put more stuff. I, I just threw a few things, but I'm going to try to get some other common things that people might want to grab. So if I wanted to put in, any, and they're, they're different sizes, and I put the size on there. You may wonder, what are those numbers? That's how many pixels big it is. So like when it says NC Helmet Logo 72 by 73, that's how many pixels it is, and a pixel's a dot. <laughs> so that's how many dots on the screen. So that's pretty small. This one's 560 by 560. That's a lot of dots. That's a big one, you know. And so I've got usually small and large versions of a lot of these. Now, if it's too big, you can shrink it down once you get it in. I'll show you that, too. Okay? Well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll go ahead and put one of these in as well. I'll go with um, um, the, I'll just go with the big NC here. So I could grab one of those off and say, okay, and I can drop that into it now. See, that's big. <laughs> that's a big picture. But that's good. It's good that it's big because that will let me show you what to do with it once it gets there. Here, this one's way too big. I mean, it's giant. Big, giant NC. Well, no problem. If you click on a picture after you've inserted it, please note you get a little pop-up menu bar. Anytime you put a picture in, all you have to do, click on the picture, gives you a little pop-up menu bar there. And that pop-up menu bar allows you to change several things about the picture. We have things like left, center, right, small, medium, large, original, um, and then wrap on and wrap off. So I could say, let's make this small. Suddenly, much smaller. Very good. I could say, let's put it on the right-hand side. Excellent. Let's turn word wrapping on. There we go. Now, I put two pictures in, so let me grab this one, and maybe I'll move this picture down. So um, instead of having uh, the NC, actually, I probably should put the NC down. I probably should, that's no big deal. I'll let the NC sit over there. Let's say I want to put my picture at the bottom of the page here. So let me click here. Oh, I've got room. Okay, so I've got a spot down there. I can click on the image also, and I can drag things around. So if I come and drag this all the way down to the bottom, I can put my face down there. And then maybe for my face, I'll just make that centered, like that. All right, did I do that okay? Yes, there we go. So now I've got the NC over here. I chose small, I chose right, and I chose wrap on. And then for this picture, I just chose center, and I have wrap off. So that's the idea. Any picture you put in, you can manipulate them that way. Any questions there? You just, you just click and drag it. You just actually grab a hold of it and just drag it around to other spots. I do want to talk about copying things from another site and cleaning that up because that could be something that happens a lot. I could see that occurring. Um, so, again, you don't need to do this. Just watch because you don't really need to copy something from somewhere else. But let's pretend that I'm going to put something at the bottom here that's copied from another site and we want to talk about cleaning it up now and so I'm gonna pretend that I'm Janelle here and I'm gonna go in and maybe I want to grab you know some stuff off of this page okay well if I were to come in here and highlight some of these things 
I'll just grab a couple. I could come in, highlight them, copy, come over here, and paste. And it's going to grab that stuff from the other site. Now, the problem is it's not going to look the same as the rest of my page, okay? Because when I do that, it's going to bring in all of the coloring and fonts and everything from the other site, okay? Plus, these images that it brought with there, you really can't trust those because, you know, if you eventually get rid of your pal pack page, those images aren't going to be, you know, there. It's not going to have something to link to, okay? So they'll just disappear. So basically, I want to clean this up. So what could I do? Well, what I could do is I could click here. Whoops. Ah, oh, come on, Eric. Go ahead and put a couple of spaces in there. There we go. I could drag over these things, and I could come up to the top toolbar where it says Remove Formatting. Now, I didn't show you that one earlier. Up in the Formatting bar, kind of next to left, center, right, there's a T with an X. That's to strip out all the crazy formatting. If I do that, what it does is it basically removes all, now the picture's still there, I'll, I'll go ahead and get rid of the picture. I'll just click on the picture and just say X, click on the picture and just say X, click on the picture and just say X. So I now can clean this up. It's going to take a little cleanup because it's a little bit messy, but there we go. I can clean that up. I could change, you know, I can move things around now. I can do some different stuff now that I've done that, and that has stripped off the weird stuff that came with it, the different fonts, the different colors, things like that. So again, it's just highlighting things and saying remove formatting. Well, there's nothing to remove now. I've already removed it. But, and then it goes ahead. Now it leaves the link, so the links are still good. Okay, we don't lose those. That's nice. And I can come in and I could say, okay, let's um, maybe bullet this list or something. I mean, I could clean it up however I want now. and clean this up just a bit more. Maybe I'll go ahead and bullet all of this now. Oops, I forgot to bullet that one. There we go. All right. And so I could have a nice bulleted list there or something like that. I could hit save, save all my changes, and there we go. I've got that in there. So if you want to bring something from another site, your friend is the text format removal button, which is up in the... Uh, top menu bar there, okay? And that will help you strip off the old stuff and make it look like your new site. All right, guys, well, we're going to move now from editing our welcome page to creating new pages. Any questions before we do that? Heading into the deeper end of the pool at this point. Okay. All right, All right guys, well, let's go ahead and move on to creating new pages. So how does that work? Well, Let's say we're back on our main welcome page here, and we want to start adding a calendar page, and a links page, and a files page, and a pictures page, and a announcements page, and whatever. Well, to do that, we go up to the top menu bar, and right next to the edit button is the new page button. Looks like a piece of paper with a plus sign on it. Go ahead and give a click on the new page button, and here's the screen you're going to get. you got to pick a couple of things. The name of the site, Optionally, you can change the link for the site if you don't like the long link it gives you. The template for the page, and then where the page is going. So name the page, page template, where it's going, maybe change the link to the page if you don't like the long link. Okay, guys, for this example, let me say I'm going to do, um, well, I'll do a calendar page, but let me explain kind of the idea behind the different choices we'll have here. But I'm going to use, I'm going to use a calendar page as my example. Again, if, if you don't want to do exactly that, that's fine. You can, you know, do something different. But for this example, I'm going to do a calendar page. So I'm going to type in calendar for the name of my page. And you'll notice that right below there it says this is going to be the link to your page. And notice what it does. It takes whatever your page is and it just sticks on the end of it the name you just gave. Now, there's nothing wrong with calendar. That's a perfectly fine link. But if I had named it something like a uh, calendar page or something, it would make that calendar dash page. Well, maybe I don't want my link to be so long. Again, don't worry. It's perfectly fine. 
But I just want you to know you're allowed to change the link. If you want to say, I don't want it to be slash calendar dash page, I could just make it, you know, cal for calendar or something like that. You do not have to do that at all. I'm just merely letting you know that's what that's about. You can name it one thing and the link can be something different. They don't have to be the same. Or they can't. It's, it's, it's your call. Here's the key though. What type of a template is this going to be? All right, there are four main templates that I'm going to focus on. There's a fifth one called Start Page, and depending upon the template you used originally, there might have been some other ones I had put in there. But these are the Google provided templates. There's one called Web Page, there's one called Announcements, there's one called File Cabinet, and there's one called List. Okay? Now, you could use any one of these probably to make a calendar if you wanted to. I mean, it just depends on how you want to do it. Okay, it's, I'm, again, I'm not telling you the way to do it. I'm just going to tell you a way to do this. First of all, what's the web page template? If you just use web page, you get a blank page. <laughs> That's all it is. Okay, it's a blank page that you need to fill up with stuff. Now, guys, you can put all kinds of stuff on a blank page. You can insert a calendar, you can put a map in, you can put text, you can add links, you can do all kinds of stuff. So just the web page, even though it's just a blank page, it's actually very useful. A lot of times that is going to be the choice you want to make. What's the next one? The next template well, there is called the announcements one. That's what I used for that like news page that I showed you in the earlier one. The, the announcements template basically creates a blog. It's like a blog page where you can add posts that get chronologically ordered on the page. Newer things to the top, older things to the bottom. That's an announcements page. I could see that being good for, again, a newsletter, for, you know, class announcements, for, um, you know, a student of the week. You're going to highlight a different kid each week, and so each week you go to the announcements page. Well, you don't call it, you just call it student of the week, but you go to the announcements page, and you would go ahead and Put, put in a new kid each week or something like that. So things that are chronological, things that require posts, that's a good match for you. And again, please don't misunderstand. You can have as many announcements pages as you want. It's not like, oh, this is your announcements page. You no, know, it's a template. You can have one for the newsletter and one for the student of the week and one for this and one for that. It's just a kind of a page, okay? And then file cabinet, what's that? Well, it lets you upload files. Okay, so basically you click, you upload files, or you link files in that already exist somewhere else out there. So that's perfect for handouts. It's perfect for permission slips. Uh, it could, that could be for your newsletter, you know, upload the PDFs of your newsletter. Um, you want to showcase student work, you know, you could be uploading things kids have written, you know. So that's a document collection type of a page, all right? And then the list page. This one is a little harder to explain. It's what I used for the links page you saw earlier. A list page is where you get to create a grid. You get to name the columns, and then you can add the rows in. So it would be good for, let's say you're running a club. That could be your roster. Okay? You could have the name of the person and the position or something, or if it's you know, a, a sports team. It's also good for things like a links page, if you wanted to. You don't, you don't have to use it for a links page. I, I'll do that for my example today, but obviously you could just type the links in and bullet them. You don't have to do that, but it would be good for like a links page where you'd have title, description, link, category, whatever, and each row then becomes a different web link shooting off. So it could be upcoming events, you know. Maybe you don't want to do calendar the way I'm going to show you here in a moment. Maybe you just want to say, you know, maybe it's not like a class. Maybe it's like a ski club, and you just want to show the next five, you know, events. Each row could be a different, you know, event coming up. So that's what a list page is. Well, for this one, we're going to use web page for the way I'm going to show you to do a calendar page. So we named it calendar page. You don't have to change the link. I just let you know that exists. We chose web page for the template, and then where does it go? We're going to leave almost everything at the top level. For what we're doing today, very, very rarely will we pick a different location. So I'm going to say this is going at the top level, which uh, means it will show up in the navigation bar on the side. Anything at the top level is going to show up in that navigation bar on the side. And that's it. I hit create. So I named it. I chose the template. I hit create. Now, guys, look at what just happened. On the top left under navigation, it now says calendar page. So there's a home link. And there's a calendar page. So now I've got a calendar page. And it's opened me up into the calendar page with nothing there. Because what was it? A web page template. It's just blank. So how could I make a calendar page? Well, 
what I could do is I could say something like uh, C below for um, my uh, class assignment calendar or something like that. Okay. Now, Google Sites does not have a calendar builder. You're not going to be like PalPak where you're entering events into Google Sites. What Google Sites lets you do is it lets you link to things you already have. Remember what I said how earlier I have pretend calendars? So like if I go into my calendars, remember how I said I made a Kurtz pre-algebra calendar and on that Kurtz pre-algebra calendar I had things like homework and quizzes and tests. Okay, it's just a pretend calendar I made. Well, you guys can make calendars in Google Calendar for each of your classes or subjects or whatever you want. And then what could I do? Well, in my calendar page in Google Sites, I would simply go up to Insert and look at all the stuff I can stick in here. Yeah, we know about images, but I can put in a calendar. I can also put in charts and documents and drawings and maps and photos and spreadsheets and videos and all kinds of stuff. But I can stick a calendar in there really easy. I just go insert calendar and it says, okay, Eric, which calendar do you want? Now, why do I have so many? Well, it's because I've got my family's calendars in there and I've got other ones that I subscribe to. Okay, you're not going to have all those. You're just going to probably have your personal calendar, but there it is, Kurtz Pre-Algebra. See, I can choose my class calendar. Choose it, hit select, and that's pretty much it. I don't have to change any of this. I can just hit save. If I want, sure, I can. I can uncheck this and do that and do whatever. I might say I don't need a title on it. I may take that off, but I'll just pretend that's all fine and hit save. Now, when it inserts it, it inserts it in edit mode as a gray box. Okay, When you're in edit mode, it's not live. You're not seeing the stuff. So don't be like, whoa, that's a weird looking calendar there, Eric. I'm still in edit mode. I haven't hit save yet. Any gadget that you stick in looks like a gray box when you're still editing the page. As soon as I hit save, it goes live, and now there's my calendar. Simple as that. I now have a calendar page that will pull things live from my Google Calendar. Now, what if you've got a pre-algebra calendar and an algebra calendar? Do you have to make two calendar pages, two calendars? No, actually you can merge them. You could come in here. I could just come in and say, okay, let me edit this page. And let's say I want to modify my calendar. How do I modify this gadget? If I click on it, I get a little pop-up. You know, left, right, center, wrapping. Ah, and a gear. It's got a little gear. Any gadget you put in, any gadget is always going to have a little gear in edit mode. If I click the gear, what's it do? It takes me right back to where I was, where I can display another calendar if I want. So I can come in and say, okay, I don't just want Kurtz Pre-Algebra, I also want Algebra 1. I could check, whoops, come on, let me check both of them. It does honestly let you do that. Oh, oh, oh no, I already had that one. I'm picking another one. I'm sorry. I don't have to repick the one I had. Brain lapse there for a second, sorry. Okay, so I'm adding another one to it. Ah, <laughs> okay, so you can go in and pick as many as you want one at a time. So now it's got pre-algebra and it's got algebra one. Hit save, hit save, and now it's got my algebra one chapter 10 test here, and then it's got my pre-algebra stuff in a different color or whatever. Okay, so that's the idea of using a blank web page and inserting things into it. You know, you can put pretty much anything in there. Yes. That is a wonderful question. The question is, can you make the Google Calendar prettier? The answer, in short, is no. You really can't. Uh, the most you can do is change the colors. You can, you know, adjust what the default color is for each one of them. Uh, there are some really advanced things that you can tweak here and there, but it's not something that really works for what we're doing. Um, so no, no, really, yeah. It's, that's what it looks like. Now, you can, like, say, oh, I want to change some defaults, like, whoops, go into my gear. I can say, instead of month view, I want it to start in week view, you know, or, you know, I want to make it taller or something. It, it, not much. You, there's not really a whole lot you can do other than just insert it in there. But keep in mind, this is really nice because what happens if a parent or a student comes to your site and they view your calendar, if they scroll to the bottom of it, 
there's a button that says plus Google Calendar. Anybody that clicks that button, it'll pop up. If they have their own Google Calendar, it'll pop up a screen saying, would you like to add this to your calendars? So that's how, like in the middle school, we have the kids go and go click through their teacher's calendars and add all of their different periods of the day to their own calendar. So that at one point, they can just look and see all, everything that's due. They can set reminders and all of that. So this is a good way to have parents be able to subscribe to your calendar. And then they don't even have to come back to the page because it just shows up on their calendar then. All right. Well, guys, that's the idea of, a, of a, what I'm just calling um, a web page. It's a blank web page kind of thing. Okay. So what would I do that now that I'm done? Well, I would just go back to my home button. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. So I decided, you know, I really don't want this calendar page. I'll leave mine, but here's what you would do. If you ever decide you want to get rid of something, it's up in that more button in the top right hand corner. And in that more button, there's lots of things. There's the delete page option that will remove it from your page. But there's also things like move page. If you want to move it to a different spot of your site, like you want to put it as a sub page of something else, you know, or you want to change the page template because that's not the one you wanted to use, or you want to change other page settings. There's lots of stuff you can do there. Okay. It's in the more button up there. All right. Well, guys, let's go ahead and click the home button to head back to your home page. And let's move on to some other kinds of pages we might want to create. All right. Pause there for just a second. Give everybody a chance to get caught up. There we good. All right. So you've seen an example of a web page template. Let's do one with the announcements template now. OK, so I'll go in and I'll come up here and I'll say I want to make a new page. So I'm back on my home page. I go up to the new page button in the top right. And for this one, maybe I'll just call this page news because I want to have class news, things that are happening in the class. Fantastic. For this one, the template I'm going to use is the announcements template. And again, I'm going to do one of each. I'm going to do a web page template, announcements, a file cabinet, and a list just to show you how they work. Doesn't mean you have to use that to do a calendar or whatever. You can pick your own type of thing, but I want to show you how they work. So I'm going to choose the announcements template for my news page. And again, I'm going to put it at the top level. So I named it news. I chose announcements. It's staying at the top level. I'm hitting create. Okay. This has now created a news page for me. And what it does is it gives me a spot where it says new post. So anytime I come back to this page, I get a new post button. Now, people, other people don't. They're not going to see a new post. They're going to see the post you make. Only you can actually add things to it, at least right now, unless you share edit rights with someone. So how does it work? Well, very simple. You add a new post. You click new post on the news page, and it's just like another blank page. And you get to make that be your post. So I'll pretend that the kids won, you know, the uh, math counts tournament. So I'll say um, uh, students win math competition. And then I could say something like um, the eighth grade uh, math team took first place in the math counts regional uh, competition and you know on and on oops I can't spell there we go and on and on and on, and on. I would actually type a lot <laughs> I wouldn't just do a little I mean I'd fill out a whole story and whatever 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 I might want to put a picture in of the kids you know that'd be fine uh, this is just a regular, remember what I told you when we edited the welcome page, I said everything you learn about the welcome page applies to everything else you do. This is just like another page. So what can I do? I could insert a picture of the kids. I could, you know, uh, insert it from the Picasso photos. I could put, you know, all kinds of stuff. I'll, I'll just do a Picasso photo because I've got some pictures here. These aren't really the math kids. These are the middle school uh, stat team, the tech helpers, but I'll pretend these are the math counts kids. So I'll just grab this picture and I'll select it and boom, there's, you know, there's the kids. Like it's not really them obviously, but I'll grab this. Maybe I'll move this down to the bottom. Maybe I'll center this and there we go. So I can make that, you know, be my, my news article there. If I hit save, there it is. 
It has now added that article. How are people going to find it? Well, the way that the announcements page works is if they go over to your news page and give it a click on that, it will show all of the different announcements. Now, I've only added one in there, so that's where it is. If I added a second one, I'll just put in a just testing so you can see. It won't be very interesting. I'll just put in just testing. This is just a test. And I'll save that. And you'll see that every time I add an article, when somebody goes back to the news page, my announcements page, it pushes the old one down and the new one shows up above it. Okay? And so people could come to your website and you could have a link to newsletter, announcements, latest happening, student of the week, call it whatever you want. They click that link and it takes them to all the posts you have made. I think, um, honestly, I don't remember how many show up on a page at once and that may be something you can edit too. I don't remember. It may be like five at a time. That I'm not actually sure, but then there's like an arrow to move to the next page and stuff. But it's going to show the most recent thing and they can scroll down through and see those announcements there. Oh, sure, yeah, because they're just web pages. So what I can do, I've got edit post and edit post. See, I get that link. The parents wouldn't see that. But I can come and say, oh, okay, edit the post. It'll reopen it. And at that point, I could da-da-da-da-da-da-da, do whatever I want. Or save that and go to my more button where you've got the delete page option. And, yes, I could delete it just like a regular web page. If I said, ah, oh, I didn't mean to have that post at all, you know, I could even just delete it out. Okay, guys, pause there for a second. So I just want to show you different types of templates. You've seen a web page template. It's blank. You insert things. You've seen an announcements template. It creates a chronological blog. Okay. I still want to show you the file cabinet template and the list template. And we have half an hour. <laughs> I'll try my best to, just to show each of them to you real quick here. So um, questions before we move on to the file cabinet template. Okay, good. Okay, let's do that. Um, I'm actually going a little bit out of order in the handout. So where I'd ask you to turn, you don't have to, but if you want to, I am going to go to page 14. I'm going to jump up to page 14, okay? And we're going to pretend that we're making like a forms and docs page, uh, you know, a handouts page or something like that, okay? All right, here we go. So let's go ahead and um, go back to our home page. If you're not there, come back to my home page. And I'm going to say I want to create a new page. So up in the top right-hand corner, click on the New Page button like normal. And I'm going to call this, um, I'm just going to call it my Files page. You can call it Forms and Docs. Call it Newsletter. This could be your newsletter. This is where you upload your newsletter. Handouts, worksheets, whatever you want to call it. Okay. For the template, though, the kind of template this is, it's called a file cabinet template. So that's what we're going with. So I'm going to choose file cabinet. That's the template. And again, I'm putting it at the top level. No need to put it underneath anything. So name the page, file cabinet template, top level, create. All right. And there's your files page. Now, the way a files page works is you add files to it in one of two ways. And the two links that let you do that are the top, sort of on the left there. There's one that says add file and one that says add link. Okay, let me explain the difference here. If you want to put something on your files page and it does not already exist on the internet anywhere, it's on your hard drive, it's in your M drive, it's in your My Documents, then you have to click the add file button to upload it to the site because nobody can get to it unless it's online. But if it's already online somewhere, you could use the add link instead. And you say, well, Eric, how would my files be online? Well, what about Google Docs? Okay, let's say you make a, um, a handout or a syllabus or a, a study guide in Google Docs. That's already online. You don't need to upload that. It is online. So you would simply grab the link to that. And you would put that, and I'll show you that. We'll do that real quick. You would put that in as an add link. You're not really uploading a file then. You're linking to one that's already online. And with Google Docs, you can even put any kind of file. You may not know that, but you can put anything in, in your Google Docs. You can upload a PDF. You can upload pictures. You can upload a Word document. You can put anything there. And 
in that case, it's doing the storing for you. It'll store it for you there, and all you're doing is linking to it. So be aware those two options exist. I'm going to do one of both. Oh, at least one of both. We'll see. Okay. So here we go. First of all, let me click Add File. And I'm and again, if you don't have something to link to or to upload right now, that's fine. You can just watch me. If you do off your M drive, go ahead. Go ahead and grab something if you have something. If not, don't, don't worry. I went ahead and put a few things on my desktop again just so I'd have something for the session today kind of ready to go. And I think I've got like, um, here's one, using the NCMS homework calendar. So let's say I want this help guide to be out there for the parents. So if they come to my web page, they can see how to use our homework calendars, okay? So I can click on that PDF and say open, and it's going to upload it. It's actually copying it from my computer, and it is saving it on my website somewhere out there in the cloud, okay? As simple as that, there it is. That file is now on my files page. Well, I can do a few things with it, though. Right here, I know you can't tell it's there, but there's a blank box. This is the description area. So if you want to, you can actually click next to any file that you upload there, and you can put in a short description. So I could say something like, how to use the homework calendars. So I could add a little description in there if I wanted to. You don't have to, but I could. Now, if I've only got two or three files, no big deal. If I start adding a bunch of files here, though, it's going to get messy, okay? Well, there is an option on a file cabinet page to put things in folders, okay? It's not really folders. It's just like section headings is really all it is. But I could check this file. And I could say move to, I don't have any folders, move to a new folder. And I could call it uh, help guides or something like that. Maybe that makes sense for that one. And hit save. And now it puts this little, like a header, the little folder cute icon and help guides. And so I can break each of my files out into little categories there. So if I wanted to upload something else, me, I think I've got the student AUP on here somewhere. Let me see. Um, Yep, there it is. So let's say I upload the student acceptable use policy. Well, that's not a help guide. That doesn't make sense. So for that one, I might say, let's put that in a new folder called common forms or something like that. Okay? Save that. And so I've got a help guide section and a common forms section. And you can put as many in as you want, and it kind of organizes them for you. Now let's contrast that with adding a link instead of that. So I'm going to open up my Google Docs. Again, you do not have to do this. You can just watch and see what, I, what I'm talking about here. And if you're not comfortable with this, please check. We've got handouts galore. I did a class earlier this week called the Paperless Classroom with Google Docs. It's all about this kind of stuff, putting your files online, sharing them, all that kind of stuff. So please check that out. There's a real good handout on that as well. But I went ahead and I put some pretend stuff in here again. So under curriculum, under math, I've got a folder called Space Math because I used to do an astronomy unit with the kids and I taught angles and stuff like that. So this is back in the day, <laughs> back, back when I was teaching, back in the day. Okay, so I, if I want to say, well, I don't need to upload this PDF, it's already there. I put it in Google Docs. And I don't need to upload this Word document, it's already there. I put it in Google Docs, okay? So I could come in and I could say, let's go ahead and take the similar triangles worksheet that I uploaded. Remember, if you don't know, it's just right here, upload in Google Docs. You can put anything in there you want, okay? I'll go in here, and I'll go to share, and I made it public. If it's not public, people can't see it, so obviously I earlier made it public. But here it is. Let me just copy the link. Copy the link. That crazy link there gets to that PDF, okay? So I could put all my handouts, all I could create all kinds of stuff, put them all there in Google Docs, come back over to my files page and not have to upload it. Instead, I just say add a link. It says, what's the link? Paste it in. There it is. What text do I want to display? Uh, I think that one was called uh, similar triangles. I could, oh, jeez, I kind of learned to spell. All right, there we go. Um, there was an L of a difference in what I wrote there. How about that? That was a good one. Uh, that was pretty funny. Okay, and then I can put in a, a description here if I wanted to or whatever. Okay, hit add, and it goes ahead and drops that in. Well, that one needs to be in a folder, so maybe I'll move it to a folder called Space Math because that will have all of my Space Math handouts or something like that. Notice 
Download's not an option now. View and download are options to look at or save a copy of the things I uploaded. This is just a web link, so if somebody clicks this, it's not going to give them the download option there. But once they get to it, yes, then they could do stuff with it. So there's my Space Math worksheet, and they could come in here, click File, and they can download it if they wanted to. But the point is, it's letting Google Docs do the work, okay? It's letting Google Docs host it, and Google Docs is taking care of that. Same thing for a regular Google Doc. Now, that was a PDF. What if I wanted to do another help guide? In my help guides, let's find the one for what we're doing today. Uh, using Google Sites for class web pages. That's not a Word document. It's not a PDF. It's a Google document. It was written in Google Docs, okay? I could click on that, go to share, go to share. It's public on the web. I already did that. Copy the crazy long link to it. Come back over to my files page. And I'm not going to upload it. I'm going to add it as a link. Paste that crazy link in there. Say, using Google, whoa, Google Sites for class pages. Hit Add. Grab that one and move it into Help Guides. And so I can start organizing all of that kind of stuff. Now, if somebody comes here and clicks on viewing that, it's actually going to open it up as a Google Doc. It's not a PDF. It's just a, a Google Doc. And they would get to the Google Doc version of it. So that's the idea, guys, is you can build a file cabinet page to hold all kinds of stuff. You know, it, And again, it doesn't have to be that. You could name the page Newsletter. And all you're doing is uploading your new newsletter each week. Okay? And you can have as many file cabinet pages as you want. It's not like, oh, this is your only page. Make one for the newsletters, make one for your handouts. Perfectly fine. Okay? Yes? When this goes live, does this disappear? Good question. You see things they don't see. If somebody goes to view your page, they do not see add file, add link. Only you see that because you're the editor. Those things don't show up on there. They, they don't see that other stuff. Okay? All right. All right. Now, let me show you something real quick. I'm not going to ask you to do this because it's a little bit more deep into the pool stuff. But I'm going to take a very quick deep. We have 20 minutes. We're good. We can still fit in the list page. I want to show you something because I just want you to be aware. What if you've got lots of files? Now, I know the little folder icons are cute and they help. But I've seen PowPack pages, and I've seen how much stuff certain teachers put on. I mean, hundreds of files. I just want you to be aware that you can structure this differently. And what it, the idea is something like this. If you look at page, page 16, if you look at page 16, Google Sites, things don't have to be one page at a time. You can actually make something a little bit more sophisticated and have multiple pages linking together and so forth. Now, I'll bring this up on the screen here, too. If you, oh, here we go. Uh, page 16. <laughs> Am I there yet? Nope. Almost. There we go. Okay. So, for example, what you could do is you could say, you know what, Eric? One page to hold my files is not going to be pretty. I got too many. Or one page to hold my links isn't going to be pretty. I got too many. Or one page for whatever. Watch what you can do, guys. You can make a first page that is a web page template. Okay? It's not going to have the files. It's not going to have the links. It's not going to have the whatever. It's a web page template that's going to hold links that branch off to sub pages where each of those sub pages is a category. So maybe I've got a files page that branches off to my forms, uh, like common sign-up forms, and it branches off to my fraction handouts, and it branches off to my equation chapter handouts. That's fine. You can do that. Now, again, I'm not asking you to do this right now because it's a little bit more steps and I'm being sensitive to time, but I'm going to do it and I'm going to show it to you. So at least you can see the idea behind how this works. Now, if you're a really fast clicker and you want to try it, please feel free to follow me, but I don't want anybody to feel frustrated, okay? All the instructions, every single step-by-step -step is right there in the handout, but I want you to get the idea, and again, there's nothing special about a files page. You could do this with any page. It's just the idea of a splash page that kind of links off to the others. So watch me as we do this. Here's my, here's my plan. I'm going to go back to my home page, and I'm going to make another files page. 
but I'm going to do it differently this time. I'm going to have a launch page that branches out to the others. So I'm going to go say I'm going to make a new page. I'll call it Forms and Docs just so I don't get confused here and forget which one was which. I am not going to make it a file cabinet page though, because it's not going to hold the files. It's just going to be a web page. I'm just going to leave it a regular blank web page. That's all it is, just a web page. That's it. Top level, Forms and Docs, web page. So I create that page. Okay, there it is, Forms and Docs. Not too exciting, I know, okay? I, I, maybe I'll say something like, click the links below to open any category or something like that, okay? Now, I know there's nothing below there yet. I realize that, but that's fine. Okay, we'll just hit save, and there it is. So that's going to be the first page people hit. And then I want them to be able to jump off of that to go to each of my different categories because, you know, I want to see how that works. Again, you don't have to do that. So what do I do? I make another new page. So now I go in from the Forms and Docs page, and I say I want to make another new page, and I call this one Help Guides. Okay? This one is a file cabinet page because I am actually putting the files on this page. Okay? So it is a file cabinet page. Ah, here's the first time we get to do this. Select a location. This isn't a top-level page anymore. I don't want that showing up on my navigation bar. I want it to be under, I want it to be a sub page, a child page of the Forms and Docs page. It's going to be downstream from it, linked below it, okay? So I'm going to put it under my Forms and Docs page. I could put it anywhere, really. You can click choose a different location. It'll show you everywhere. You can see your entire site. But I'm putting it under Forms and Docs because that's where I want it to be. And I hit Create, and now it has just created a page called Help Guides. It is a regular um, uh, file cabinet page. I can add files to that just like normal. I won't really put much. I'll just throw the AUP on or something just so there's something there. And there we go. There's the student AUP. Okay. So far, so good. Fill that page out, blah, 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 blah. Now I need another page. I need one for space math, right? I need my space math page, okay? So what do I do? Well, I'm going to create another new page. It's probably safer to go back to Forms and Docs and create the new page from there because then it'll already pick where it's going to go as a child page. If not, I'm going to have to scroll through all my pages to pick where I put it. So I'll go back to Forms and Docs, create a new sub page, call this one Space Math, make it a file cabinet page, and put it again under Forms and Docs. It's going to be a child page underneath Forms and Docs. Create that. And for this one, I need to do a, a link because that one isn't really getting uploaded. So I go to Space Math, and I go ahead and I grab my link. Oh, get my link, copy that, come back over, and we'll just pretend I'm doing a whole bunch of these. We add the link in, and we call it Similar Triangles. Yep. Worksheet. All right. And so that's in there. Okay, so I can have file cabinet pages for each category. How do people get to them? Well, let's go back to my Forms and Docs page. Now, I can, it does say sub pages, but that's not real pretty there. I can actually put a gadget in here that is much more attractive that will list anything downstream from that page automatically. If I add something new downstream, it just shows right up there. It's called a sub-page listing gadget. It's right there in the handout, but let me show you how it works. If I go back to edit my Forms and Docs page, I can come here, and I can say I want to insert a sub-page listing. So many things I can insert, that's one of them, a sub-page listing. Click that, and it says, okay, what do you want to call it? Well, I'm going to call it Categories, because that's what it's listing is the categories. And how deep do you want it to go? One level, two level? Well, I only have one level, but you could let it go as deep down below as you want. If you've got, like, things inside of things, that's fine. I, I'm not going to. Uh, as for the width, I usually like to make that blank instead of 250 pixels because if you leave empty, it makes it 100% width. It stretches it across the whole page. I think that's better so things don't wrap and look funny. So I usually do that. And then how do you want it to look? Total preference is just up to you. I kind of like this one with the colored header. I just think it's cuter. So what did I do? I said insert subpage listing. I gave it a name. I changed the width to blank to make it 100%. In my own personal preference, I went with the first appearance look. Hit save. It's a gadget, so it's gray until I hit save and ta-da. 
it looks at whatever's downstream and it automatically creates that list for me. So if somebody comes to my forms and docs page, if they're at home and they go, let me look at this forms and docs page, they don't get to the files there. They get to a sub page listing where then they break out to the help guides and then they can come back to there and then they can break out to the space math page. And so you can do that with anything in Google Sites. You can build nested pages that feed others. Now, what if you say, well, Eric, I don't want this sub pages thing to show up because that one's not real pretty. This one's prettier. All the stuff at the bottom, sub pages, add files, comments, all of that you can turn off. You don't need any of that to be showing if you don't want it to. That is all controlled just like when you went to delete a page or change your page stuff. That's under the more button. It's called page settings. If you want to clean out any of those little optional things at the bottom, those are all controlled in your more page settings. You'll see like, do you want to show the title? Do you want to show the links to the sub pages, attachments, comments? If you don't like those showing up, you can clean them out and then it's a much more cleaner page. You'll just have the stuff you put and it'll get rid of those things at the bottom. That's up to you. I mean, you don't have to do that, but I'm just saying if you want to really tidy things up, you can always go into more page settings and check and uncheck the little optional things you want to see there. Okay, guys. Now, I know that was um, real quick. <laughs> That's why it says you didn't have to click them yourself. But any, any questions about that concept of uh, putting pages under pages? Is that okay? Again, it just depends. If you can fit it on one page, that's fine. But if you've got a lot of stuff, feel free to use that idea of branching off to sub pages, okay? All right, guys, we've got basically one type of page left, and it's called a list page. Now, we're going to make a list page, and for our, my example, we're going to make it be like a, a links page. Please know, though, you don't have to use a list page to do a links page. You could use just a web page template and do nothing but put them in like this. You saw me do that earlier. You could just type them in. Okay, You don't have to do a list page, but I want to show you how a list page works, so I'm going to use the links page as an example for it. Okay, So you kind of get the idea of what a list page works like, but you might, you may be fine just to bullet a bunch of things and just put them in that way. That's perfectly fine too. But let's go ahead and do a list page. So please get back to your home page if you're not there. And from the home page, let's go ahead and click the new page button in the top right. I'm going to call this links page. And you can delete anything later. If there's something you don't want from our session today, don't worry. You can always delete your pages out. For the type of a template, I'm going to choose the list template. So links page, list template. And that's it. It's a top level page. It's called links page. It's a list template. Hit create. Now guys, remember what I said, a list page is a page that allows you to create a grid. You pick the columns, you then add in the data on the rows. Okay? So you could do this for a roster, you could use it for team members, you could use it for upcoming events. We're going to use it for educational links as an example. And if you're following along this, we are on page. We're backtracking now because I skipped over that, sorry about that. We're on page 10, a simple one page, a one page links page, page 10. Okay. So page 10, a one page links page. So here we are. Um, we're going to create our links page and it's giving you some options. Do you want to do a, an agenda, an issue, a unit? No, we want to create our own. So on the far right of the links page, we're going to define our own columns. We want to make our own list. We're not going to use a pre-made list. We're going to make our own columns. So go ahead and click Use Template. And I know this is a little weird at first, looks a little strange, but let me explain the idea. You're creating your columns. You're deciding what you want each column to be. So if it was a roster, it might be first name, last name, position, you know, grade level. I don't know. If it was upcoming events, date, time, location, event. Well, if we're doing educational links, we might want the title of the link, the web address of the link. You might want a description of it. You might want a category for it. That's up to you. I'm going to do those four for my example. You don't have to do exactly those four, but I'm going to say title, link, description, category, or something like that. Okay? So how do I do that? Well, where it says column name, 
I'll start with category because I'm going to say I want, oops, category. I'm going to say category because I want to kind of group them together, you know, have them kind of be. Yeah. So one of my columns is going to be called category. Then I'll hit add column. And my next one next to it, I'll call it title. It'll be the title, well, you know, like extra math or Moby math or whatever it is. Add another column. The next one I'll call link because that's the, the actual web address, okay, that it's going to. And for the next column, I'll call it uh, description. So if I wanted to add a description, I could. Now, folks, if later I go, oh, no, I didn't mean to do that, no problem. Any one of these I can click on and I can change. I can also click and use the up and down arrows to change their order. I can hit the little X to delete them. So the columns are completely at my disposal to do whatever I want with. But I made a category column, a title column, a link column, and a description column. I do need to consider one other thing, though. What kind of stuff am I putting in the column? Notice the category, the title, the description, those are just text things, right? But the link shouldn't be. The link should actually take people somewhere. So notice what I can do. If I choose the link column, I'm allowed to choose what type of data is going to go in there. Well, it's going to be a URL. That's what I want to... Now, I, I wish they said link. URL, people don't always know what that means, but that's, that's an... It means universal resource locator, but it's a, it's a link, okay? So for the link category, I want my type of data in there to be a URL. That way it's a hyperlink. Anything I put in there, it's going to actually send people out to those things, all right? And again, you don't have to do this. You can do links other ways. I'm just showing this as an example. Category, title, link as a hyperlink, description. Last thing before I hit save, I'm allowed to say how I want these sorted. Well, my guess is I would like to sort by category so all the fraction links are together and all the decimal links are together and all the graphing links are together. And then after category, let's sort by the title. So they're alphabetical after the category. All right, there we go. So I made four columns, category, title, link, description. I made the link column be a URL type. And I said, let's sort by category and title. Any questions before I hit save? Here we go. OK, hit save. Once I hit save now, there it is. I've now made a list page. At this point, I have columns, category, title, link, description. If I want to add rows to it now, each row could be another web link. Moby Math, Extra Math, uh, you know, um, I don't know what else we want to send them out to, you know, Everyday Math, lots of math. How do I do that? That's what the big Add Item button is for. And again, nobody else sees it but you. That's because you're the editor. If I click Add Item, I just fill in the columns I created. Now, I made the columns, so I fill them in. So the category will be, let's say, something like uh, Math Practice or something. could be the category. The title is Moby Math. Well, I have to have the link, and I don't remember it right offhand, so I'll open up a new window. I'll type in Moby Math. And it looks like it's runmoby.com. That's the actual, okay, that's how you get to Moby Math. Okay, so I forgot the link. I went out and found it. So I do have to find the link. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to copy the Moby Math link. Going to come back over here, and I'm going to paste that in. Okay. Um, now, guys, sometimes links are really, really long. That one's not bad, but I know you know what I mean. Sometimes web links are crazy long. So this tool gives you the option, if you want, to actually put in a different text that is getting linked. If you don't want to actually show the whole web link, so I could type in a word like link or click here or something like that, and that will become the link, and it won't show all the crazy long stuff. So that's an option. In description, again, I don't have to, but, you know, great site for... Math skills. Okay. So I typed in my category, my title. I pasted in the link. I said, make it say click here instead. And I put a description in. I hit save. And it adds it. Okay. And I can keep doing that over and over and over and over again. And I could build link after link after link after link after link. And now, what people can do, they can't add items, but they are allowed to change the sort. It doesn't, it doesn't, it only changes it for their view, okay? So they're not really changing your page. But if somebody comes here, they could sort by category, sort by 
the title, sort by the description. That doesn't make sense for this, but let's say it was a roster. They could sort by the grade level. They could sort by the position. They could sort by the last name if they wanted to. Okay? It doesn't really change your page. It just changes what they're seeing of the page. Okay? So that is an option that you could use for like a links page, a roster page, a coming up events page, and you have total control of the columns. You are allowed to make those columns however you want. Okay? Well, guys, we're about to wrap up here. Um, I did realize that I never showed you a pictures page, so I'm not going to ask you to do it. I'm just going to show you crazy fast the idea of a pictures page, which is nothing more than a blank web page where you insert a Picasso slide gym. That's all it is. But I'm not going to show it, so please don't try to click. I'm going to go way too fast on this one. But if you wanted to do like a pictures page, you could say new page. I'll call it photo gallery. And I'm going to make it a blank web page, okay? That's all it is. Create a photo gallery page. All you have to do is, if you come to the session later on Picasso Web, or if you read the handout, it's, it's online, read the handout, you can put pictures in Picasso Web, and then you can insert those galleries right into your page. It's nothing more than insert Picasso Web slideshow. We're not inserting an individual picture. I'm inserting an album slideshow. How's that work? Takes me to my Picasso Web. Here's all my albums, okay? Lots and lots of albums. Let's say I want to put an album in on uh, math comics, okay? Sure, found some funny math comics, I can do that. Or an album on the middle school stat team, or whatever the case. Oh, I'll do the stat team, that's fine, okay. So I pick the album, and I select it, and it asks you some questions. Honestly, the only thing that I think matters is how big you want it to be. That's really up to you. I think the small and medium are just too small. I don't think it's big enough to really see the pictures well. So I would do at least large. You can make it bigger if you want, but at least large. Um, the other ones are just too small. But that's it. Put that in there. Hit save. And now it's going to pull in that gallery. And parents could watch it. They can click on it. It'll take them out to Picasso Web. When they're at Picasso Web, they can view them, download them, order prints from Walgreens, whatever they want. And I could just come back here and add another one. I could say, okay, well, that was great. Now let's come here and insert another one. And for this one, I'm going to put in, you know, the math comics or something. Select that, make it large, hit save, hit save. And now I've got two slideshow galleries there. And you can put, you know, put as many on there as you want. If one gets old, take it off. That's fine, okay? So that's just an idea. I mean, that, that's a way that could be done. Oh, anywhere. Ju just an example. Yeah. yeah. I could write on my home page, come in here and edit my home page, and click anywhere I want and say I want to insert whatever. I could put a Google map on my home page if I want to. I could put, yeah, I could put a slide show. I could say, hey, let's put famous mathematicians on my home page for whatever reason. And there they are. And now, if I hit save, when somebody goes to my home page, they get. Famous mathematicians scrolling there. Yes, everything I'm showing you can do on any page wherever you want. Those are the general tools. You use them however you want. I'm really trying to emphasize that. Pal pack, I held your hand very tightly. You couldn't veer from things. You had a pictures page. You had a files page. Guys, you can do anything you want with Google Sites. Now, I'm trying to show you some suggestions, but break the rules. Do it however you want because you've got total control. Every page can be any way you want it to be. Okay? Now, we're pretty much out of time. I do need to say one last thing, and that is when you're done with it, when you're happy with it, when you say, Eric, this is good. Yes, you do need to tell me, but you also need to make this public or nobody will ever see it. Now, don't make it public now if you don't want to, but up in the top right-hand corner, I told you there's a share button. Eventually, you're going to have to click the share button, and you're going to have to change this. Look what it says, private. Only the people below can see this. It's just me. There's a little change button next to there. You're going to have to click that, and you're going to have to choose public on the web, or else it's not going to be a web page that people can see. Once you do that and save it, then you can tell me, and I'll update your links on our website so it'll point to the new site. All right? Well, guys, there's way, way, way more than that to do with sites, but I hope that gives you a solid foundation to build from. Let me know if you have questions, and we will, you know, help you with that. I'm really excited to see what you guys end up developing. Um, 
And I've got another class at 3, but I'm going to hang around for the next hour, so do not feel that like I'm kicking you out of here. If you want to keep working on it, that's fine. If you've got questions, I'll be here probably just checking some email, getting ready for the next class. But other than that, thank you very much, and have a fantastic start to the year.